All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. I'm going to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Uh, peace and salutation to the Akim and to the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, pushing this truth and faith and sincerity. Right, and this is going to be a quick lesson on our deliverance from Egypt. All right. And because you got to understand that uh, in this time, all right, when we were serving our captivity in Egypt, all right, that the Egyptians were oppressing the hell out of us. They said they made the children of Israel all right, to serve with rigor. And you look up that word rigor, it says harshness. All right. And it also says hard bondage, you know. And our people was crying. All right, they were sighing and crying, you know. Because of the things and the hell that the Egyptians put them through. All right. And the most I heard it. All right. And that's what led us all right, to be being delivered out of the land of Egypt. All right. And if the most I heard our cries back then, all right, he's going to hear them today. Malachi 3 and 6 says that the most high doesn't change. Right. So the most high is going to hear our cries. And he's going to deliver us out of this place of miracle, which is spiritual Egypt, Revelation 11 and 8. All right. So, you know, without further ado, I'll get into it. Exodus 2 and 23. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto the most high by reason of the bondage. You see, so they were complaining, they were crying, they were sighing, you know, because of that hell, all right, that the Egyptians were putting on them, all right, which are the Hamites, all right, which means they come out of Ham, all right, one of the three sons of Noah, you know, it says, and the Most High heard their groaning, and the Most High remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So the Most High heard it, and he remembered that covenant. All right, that agreement that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, which are known as the fathers of the promise. All right? So this, this, it led to this. This is Exodus 3 and 7. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. All right? It says... Now come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hizzites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Right, so he said he heard their cries and now he has come to deliver them. All right, because the Most High, he's not a power all right, that would just sit and watch his people suffer. All right. He's not. You can read all throughout the scriptures whenever we cry unto the Most High in all of our captivities, that the Most High, he always done something about it. He always, you know, took us from, from out of the hand of the heathen. All right. He took us out of that captivity. He saved us. All right. All the time. So what, what, what makes this time any different? It says, this is Exodus 3 and 9. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And now I've also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. It says, come, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt, all right, so, yeah, like I was saying, the Most High, he heard our cries, he knew the type of hell that was being put on us, he knew, he knew how hard that captivity was for us, all right, so he said, I'm going to take them out of that land, and I'm going to bring them unto the land of Israel, all right, 
which was known as the land of Canaan. Right? Because of their oppression. And we are being oppressed today as well. Right, by, by Esau Edom, the so-called white man. Baruch 3 and 8 says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, being subject unto payments. Right? And this captivity is the worst captivity that we our people ever been in all right, because we don't know who we are. All right? And only a small few will only wake up and remember who they are, all right? That we are the, the, the true Israelites of the Bible. All right? But this is the wicked, all right? The so-called white man, he is the wicked. All right? So, you know, this is a hard captivity. Just like in Egypt, but, you know, it's just much worse. All right, but it went into saying that the most high remember his covenant. What was what was you know in that covenant? All right, that he promised to Abraham. All right. This is uh Genesis 17 and 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. All right. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a power unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Now we know that Abraham had kids, but according to the scriptures, his line or or this or this covenant went through Isaac, all right? Because you know he had Ishmael, right? And you had the six sons of Couture, all right? But he basically told him, look, I'm dealing with Isaac, all right? And after that, it went to Jacob. And after that, went down to the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So this is who we're talking about. It says, and I will keep on to thee and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein... Thou art a stranger. Oh, yeah. In that covenant, it said an everlasting covenant, meaning forever. All right? It says, And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their power. All right? The land of Canaan, the land of Israel. He said he was going to give it to us for an everlasting possession. All right? Now, do we possess that land today? No, so this is something that still has to come, all right, and it will come, all right, because the Most High He keeps His word, all right. The Most High made a promise, all right. So this has to happen. This is Leviticus twenty six and forty. They shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, which their trespass, we said, with their trespass they have trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that's what we're doing today. All right, we're confessing our nigga. We know we fucked up. We know we went off, of, you know, towards the most side. All right, we know we broke the law, statutes, and commandments, you know, and we're acknowledging our offense. All right, and we are seeking the most high ten times more, you know. It says, and that I have Leviticus 26 and 41, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts, be humble and they then accept the uh the punishment of their iniquity at uncircumcised heart basically meaning you ain't you're not keeping the law that's what uncircumcised mean all right you you being a a damn heathen in the mind all right because hearts and the hebrew is law all right you being rebellious against the most high you know uh it says and they accept and then and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity then will i remember my covenant with jacob and also my covenant with isaac and also my covenant with abraham will i remember and i remember the land you see so if we did all those things then he was going to remember the covenant that's what the elect is doing today all right that's what you see us doing today we we acknowledging our offense against the most high right and like i said we're seeking him 10 times more all right, we're dedicating our lives to the truth, to the best of our ability. All right, until Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, you know.
And it's going to cause him to remember his covenant. It says, The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lie desolate without them. And they shall accept the punishment of their iniquity because even it said, because even because they despise my judgment is because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, which we are today, we're in the land of our enemies because our land is the land of Israel. It says, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly. All right, so this captivity that we are in is not for our destruction. The scriptures tell you that. All right. We are here just to serve out of punishment, like a, like a, a prison sentence. It says, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them. For I am Yahweh, their power. So the Most High ain't going to break that covenant that he made. You know, he's not going to go back on this word. The Most High don't switch up. All right. The Most High don't forget. The Most High is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23 and 19. So the Most High going to come through on this word. He said, but I will for their sakes remember the covenants of their ancestors who I brought forth out of the land of Egypt and inside of the heathen that I might be their power. I am Yahweh. All right. Now, this is Baruch 4 and 21. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto Yahweh, and he will deliver you from the power in the hand of your enemies. It's like we got delivered out of ancient Egypt. It's like we got delivered out of previous captivities. All right. When we cry unto him, you should cry unto him now. All right. And he will deliver us. All right. So he will deliver us. Out of the power in the hand of the enemies Right And that's going to happen all right? Even though it might not be happening on our time When we want it Because right? the most I does what he wants to do all right? Prophecies still have to take place You know things still have to happen all right? And the scriptures For us to be able To, to be delivered out of here Alright like Major prophecy the mark of the beast Which is the RFID microchip all right? But not to get off topic You know I keep going But I just wanted to say that you know, it says, uh, For my hope is in the everlasting that he will save you. And George, come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. For I send you out with mourning and weeping, but the Most High will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, right? All these different nations, right? They see us in this destroyed state. All right, they see our people being oppressed and all fucked up. All right, they see the fucked up condition that we are in because of Esau, all right, and them because they had a hand in it too. All right, they don't give a damn. It says, So shall they see shortly your salvation from our power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. So they're going to see our salvation shortly. All right, they're going to see the salvation of the elect shortly. All right. Because in ancient Egypt, you know, all of Israel got let up out of there. All right. But this time in the spiritual Egypt, only the elect is going to make it up out of here. The chosen, the select chosen for you. All right. It says, my children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the most high. All right. So we have to suffer patiently. We have to wait. All right. We have to deal with this hell. All right, that the most eyes is inflicting upon us because we went astray from his word. All right, and that was in the deal. We break these commandments. Look, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring these curses upon you if you don't do what I say. All right. So that's what brought us here today to this land of America. It says, For the, for thy enemy have persecuted thee, but surely thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. Right? Just like when we was on the Pharaoh, you know. And he was afflicting us as people was persecuting us, right? We seen his destruction. We see the Most High came through. He he came and took us up out of there, and he destroyed the Egyptians, right? He destroyed them, and we was we will see the same thing with Esau. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, all right? The Most High is gonna send his son, all right, and and, and take this place down, right? By way of thermonuclear missiles and the chariots, right? Which are people call today so called UFOs, right? And it says, and shall tread upon his neck because the men of the Lord are going to receive spiritual power, all right? And it says, my delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. 
Be of good comfort over my children and cry unto the Most High, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. All right, so just by crying, the Most High is going to remember. He's going to remember his covenant. He's going to remember us. He's going to remember that we are his people. All right. And he is going to save us. All right. He's going to give us salvation by way of his son, Yahweh Shai. All right. So, you know, everybody was listening. Hope it wasn't too long. You know, that one say Shalom.